Great morning, everyone. Welcome. It's great to be alive, and it's great if you're watching Truth and Heaven. Good to be with you today. We always appreciate our viewing audience. It makes a difference for the ratings, and so we love you. Continue to watch. Hope you learn something. Be inspired today. That's right. You know, today's show is titled, entitled, Be Kind. All right. Our Be Kind show, and kindness, it goes a long way. So. Well, uh, you'll never regret mm-hmm. being kind. No. And the people you deal with will always appreciate it. That's what people will remember you by. You were a lady of kindness. I love it. Let's think about some people uh, who God has blessed in this world and whether uh, national figure uh, figures, uh, community people, yeah. uh, who's been kind to you? Who's well, you know, the, my pastors, some of the kindest men that I've ever known in my life as a small boy, they were caring men and very kind. Okay. Always thinking of others rather than thinking, you know, the epitome of Jesus Christ. He was the servant leader, okay. always thinking of others. All right, so today we're talking about that, and we have some awesome guests coming up in the show, so stick around, don't touch that dial or whatever you're watching, you're watching the Trevor and Kevin show. Welcome back. It's the Tree and Kevin Show, our Be Kind Show. Yeah, and I want you to think about that when you're dealing with me. Kindness oh, personified. Pour it out okay. and share it. Okay. When That's you come right. to the office, inspire the girls. I'm telling you, you know, whether it's being kind to your pet, yeah. being kind to animals. You know, I was at a friend's, I was at her farm, and I saw a bug, and I began to put a lot of poor water on the bug. Yeah. And she says, don't mess with that bug. This is God's creature. Oh, you know, wow. you're not being kind to that bug. And I was like, oh, my goodness, you know. And That's I felt so good. bad. You know? the, the one that comes to my mind, you know, I had a cowboy in there and we were doing his will. And he was asking one of the girls, do you have a boyfriend? And she said, no. He said, well, I'm going to give you some advice. Great advice. He said, if he's got a horse, you go out. And if the horse runs away from him when you get out of the car, okay. walk away from him. Oh, if the horse runs to him, that. that's the guy to keep. He's and wow, I've him. reflected over it. So simple, simple logic. But that man, that man loved his horse. He cared for his horse. He fed his horse. He cherished it. Okay. And those same attributes will flow over into your other relationships. I love that. Well, you know, we always, we start our show out with the scripture. Yes. And of course, I'm always prepared because I'm telling you, this stuff is in the Bible. And so Luke 6 and 31, it says, and as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them, Kevin. Yes. The good news, treating others how you want to be treated, is one of the easiest way to display God, a God-like heart. Excellent, well Treat said. Treat others the way that you desire to you you desire to be treated kind. Yes. So you show kindness to who? To all the others. That's right. And you know one of the one of the problems that we feel this banging together that's a real in 2020 is road rage. It's the opposite. Oh. So people come in and they say, oh, you cut me off and they're ready to fight. Yes. Or you took off or you did this or you did that. You rode too close. And then people are just in a rage. Yes. Well, kindness would say, we've got to forgive them. That's right. And uh, people make mistakes. We have accidents before this day's over. There will be accidents all over Tennessee. Yes. So the truth is, how can we handle it, mm-hmm. and how are we going to react to it? How you can react? respond, or you can react. And I submit re, re, the the reaction can be very, very heavy, and the response can be very, very kind. Yes, I think about Chadwick Boseman. All right, and he just passed, he recently passed away, and you know he was dealing with cancer. He was battling a private battle with cancer, and when people saw him thin. You yeah. know, he, he was the Black Panther, it, and my heart is broken and devastated because he gave a lot of young people, he gave people hope. Mm-hmm. You know, he gave them hope, and so he was battling the secret battle of stage three colon cancer, and the comments that people made, they are you on drugs, are you sick, or, yeah. you know, we have to watch what we say to people. We forget that kindness 
is how God wants us to be. We have and to it's have expressions of love. People. That's truth. right. And so they begin, they did not know that he was battling this secret, this illness, but the, the comments were so cruel. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that's one of the downsides of social media. The vast majority of social media is critical. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit of criticizing and making fun or demeaning or spreading the negative rather than the positive. That's right. And I'm always glad when someone comes to someone's defense, should you and I leave the television station today and we go and someone is being mistreated, it's a natural instinct for you and I to get involved oh, to try yes. to protect them, oh, yes. to try to help them. That's right. And we don't want to see anyone hurt. Mm -hmm. And so quite frankly, we could stop so many, you could stop so many lawsuits mm -hmm. if we could just show mm -hmm. a little kindness That's and respect. Right. And I think about um, our children who are in school and those that are dealing with bullying on, on a day-to-day -day issue and they're crying out yeah. because they're dealing with bullying. I recall being in the seventh grade and it was enough for my mother to shop at the Goodwill. We didn't have the family fancy clothes. And so my mother would go to the Goodwill and that's what we wore. And sometimes I would wear those, well, not sometimes, I would wear those clothes to school. Yeah. And there were these two young girls and every time that I would come into school, they would say, yo, you've been shopping at the Goodwill. And they would teach. Try to hurt your they parents, hurt. please. But you know what? Even we can teach our children how to be kind. Don't make fun of someone else because they don't have. Tell because it. you never know when you may be in that situation. Tell it. That's right. And never kick a man when he's down. Amen. Right? Absolutely. But you look up and you say, God, please help me. Yes. You know, maybe you need to buy that. If you don't like what I'm wearing, maybe you should buy me a dress. Yeah. Maybe you should buy me a new pair of shoes, but don't laugh because maybe those are the only pair of shoes yeah. that I have. You know, Treva, your words today, they're working on me. They are working on me. I know they're working on people out here. Uh, when you said your story, it's beautiful. Uh, Thank you. It, it's, it's a beautiful story. It's the truth. Where, you know, it's not where you start. It's where you finish. And you're not finished yet. And those words are hurtful, Mr. Oh, brother, let me tell you. I remember as a small boy. And, you know, I never had a store-bought suit. That's interesting. It's a little of my testimony. And they say, no. I never had a store-bought suit till I was 28 years old. Now, I had the finest clothes mm -hmm. because I had cousins that had nice clothes. And when they got finished, they gave them to me, and I'd get them altered. And so I was a great-dressed young man, but I never had my own store-bought right. suit. That's so right. when I got to be a lawyer, a lady in the church says, Every new lawyer needs a new blue suit. And she went and bought me a suit. But she made a great yes. investment. She's gone on. I, I talk about her. But through her witness, I've been able to help the church for mm -hmm. decades because her act of kindness. I won't forget her. And of course, now today, I don't have secondhand suits. These suits are all tailor-made. Right. And God's been good. And he continues to bless and but I still will Come never on. forget mm. the act of kindness. I love it. And I want to be Come that on. kind of man. And we're testifying today because the Lord blesses us, but a lot, oftentimes, we forget. You forgot what it was like to grow up and you Please. didn't have much and because you're eating steak every day. And you forgot when you didn't yes. have the steak. I thought chicken was steak. When Ooh. I was growing up, I said, oh. And we no. would be fighting over Don't the tell it. I thought I was rich because I had the chicken breast. Please. I did. I didn't know that. Well, <laughs> Treva, even if we're in the confessing mode, I'm going to share a little bit know. that will drive you crazy. Okay. When I was going to the law school, I had just enough money to pay the tuition. I remember going to my mother and asking for uh, to borrow her car. She had $20. My mother gave me her last 20 mm. to put in gas to go to school. Well, all the law students would take a break about 8.30 and there would be a sandwich truck and I didn't have 25 cents to buy mm. anything. I remember those days. I stayed thin. Hello, come hello, in. Hello, hello, come and in. And I remember hello. driving back and all those Burger Kings and the McDonald Golden and I said, man, wouldn't you love to be able to stop? So I understand where many people are. They say today, one in five Tennesseans goes hungry. Mm -hmm. They say today that one in four children don't have enough to eat. So when you hear these statistics, what are you doing or do you care? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? And we love the fuel program. You know, in Clarks, we have the backpacks. Oh, and, and I'm actually a distribution yes. center. People yes. brought it to me. I'll get it to the school and distribute Man. it. But you can't out give God. That's right. No matter and how much you give, he'll take care of right. you. And thank you goes a long way. All right. Saying thank you, having gratitude, 
saying thank you so much. You know, even when you go walk into a restaurant, those servers, they work really, really hard. I was a server at one time. And it's interesting because people will give you a dollar and think they've done God a service. When's the last time that you were kind to someone and you saw them in the shoes that they were in. Because sometimes we, I think we need to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Yes, it is so true. I had a senior lawyer with me and it was near Christmas and we went to a favorite restaurant and that day he left a big tip. And I said, well, did you mean to do that? I remember as we walked out, he said, these people don't make what we're making, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to give and bless. Mm -hmm. I talk about it 35 years later, even though my mentor, my great mentor was teaching me. We talk about it years later. Yeah. Help us to be people of generosity. Yeah. Help us to be givers. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever been in a in a drive through line and someone, they said, oh, the, per- the car in front of you. Yes, I have. paid for your meal. Yes. And so would you like to pay it forward or do it, you know, for the car behind you? Yes. I was like, sure. You know, and kindness and giving, it makes you feel good. It does. You know? Uh, it's like you have 10 coats. Do you need all 10 of those coats? If no. the man next to you is cold and he's, he needs shelter, yeah. you know, so we can give, we can all give a little bit more. You know, I, I had a young We're woman. almost out of time. I know, but I got to tell this one. Okay. I had an intern with me. We went in. These service men mm-hmm. were at the Burger King. I said, man, it's on Mr. Kennedy. He said, are you for real? I said, I got the credit card. It's on me. Take it. And they couldn't believe it. But I didn't do it to show off. I did it to teach the young lawyer with me. I'll never forget it. We talk about it today. Well, thank you for sharing that, Mr. Kennedy. And I pray that your hearts are blessed. And we're coming back with more right here on the Treva and Kevin Show. And remember, be kind. Amen. Good show. Good words. Welcome back. This is a wonderful segment that we have. Come on now. All right. Of course, it's our kindness show. And we have our special friends here. Julia and Amy Kilgore from Foster Care to Fabulous are here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, so good to see you, ladies. Thank you. They, they told me they've been friends for more than 25 oh, years. Oh, my goodness. I, we love that, too. And so, you all look beautiful. Absolutely. absolutely. So tell us about from Foster Care to Fabulous. Foster Care to Fabulous. It came in when I decided to go through the foster parenting program in 2012 in Montgomery County. Okay. I, during the program, the training, they showed little video clips. During the video clip, I noticed that children were still being removed from their home and their personal belongings were going in trash bags. Mm. And I couldn't believe during that time, I said over, 40 years have passed and children are still being relocated by the movement. And I had to ask, I said, can you please stop the video? And the the question was, is there something wrong? And I said, well, I think so. I said, is this real? Are they still doing this? And she says, yes. And I said, why? Do you know the impression that that leaves in the children for their entire life? Mm -hmm. And she says, well, it's easy. If it's not broken, let's not break it because we have to move several children, and I do understand that. And I prayed on this, and I thought about it. And in 2017, I had a dream. Come on, come on. I was visiting Mm -hmm. with my youngest daughter out in Kansas, Risa. Okay. I was actually working for a large corporation that's based out in California, Gino Marina. I woke up from this dream, and I said, I think I'm turning in my two-week notice. She says, you are not. I said, yes, I am. I saw it. It was a vision. I'm going to open a hair spa. In one of the rooms, it's going to be a training room. And it's going to be the base of foster care to fabulous. It came to me like that. Amen. And she says, you're really going to do this. That very day, I put my two-week notice in through an email. Got to love modern technology. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> Modern technology. <laughs> you can let things travel in a click of a second. Just like that. And it took me about three months to get it built, the building. Three months. Three months. Doors were open. Mm. And then I prayed Mm. on who the board members were going to be. Wow. I told them this is what I want to do. It brought many tears. And that is how Foster Care to Fabulous 
opened up. Wow, fascinating. Wow. Let me tell you, let me tell you the real blessing because I submitted my application in 2018, or 2017. It was uh, November and I didn't hear back and I didn't hear back. Am I gonna get this 501c3? And I just prayed on it and I said, Lord, send me a sign. January, I got that letter in the mail and I said, this is it, it is happening. It is happening. Mm -hmm. And so we became producing and coming together and collaborating. Yes, that is amazing. And the bags, again, you said when they, they leave, they were placing the items and they still do in the trash bags. In trash bags. So Foster Care to Fabulous, we actually created a first step bag. No, you did not. And let me show it to you. I'd love to see it. Kevin, Wait, this is awesome. I know, this here. is inspirational. Look at, oh my Lord. This is definitely more attractive than... Wow. A trash, wow. trash bag. Yes. yes. Now, the reason, I've had so many ask me why. why. Why made out of plastic and why this size? I said, you do not understand. We have all first responders. It could be sheriffs, police officers, child protective services. And they have to have lots of bags in the back of their vehicle because they might be moving not just one child, but it could be six children at mm -hmm. any given time. Yes. And I said, they need to be compact. Now, once they are in the system, once they have actually are in place in a foster care home, yes. then we can change up if they want to bring in suitcases or backpacks. But right now, these first responders have to be able to grab a few bags. And most of the time, they're not filling this large trash bag. They're not filling it because children are relocating with no clothes, no toothbrush, wow. not even a hairbrush. I said, this is what they need. I love how God used you and how God it's beautiful, inspired simple, you. beautiful, simple, but yet so profound. So, so tell us, Julia, what are the programs uh, offered under Foster Care to Fabulous? We have a mentorship program. And I can tell you, we do free haircuts for all children mm. who are in the system. What a giver. In the system. What Come a on. giver. So we started with, with the hair spa. And I said, anybody who comes There's in There's a hair spa? Julu Hair Spa actually oh. is one of the hosts. Wow. So anyone who comes in and works there, they will cut hair for children. They all sign a confidentiality clause because children who are in the system don't need their name put out there. We keep record. And the names of all salons and barber shops who are a part of the program, they are submitted to DCS and the other agencies so they can allow the family members to know this is a place to go. This wow. is a mentorship program. And let me tell you, we actually have this cute little decal awesome. for all barber shops and salons. Cute. This goes in the window. Like when you see who takes American Express, right? Right. That's on the door, okay. so then you know. So this goes on the outside of the door, and it shows that they are part of that mentorship program. Okay. And it is fantastic because that lets children know I'm comfortable there. Amen. Someone in there. Okay. And, they, and they can have any any haircut. Because you know, haircuts nowadays can be $24 to $40. What a okay. gift. Okay. What a gift. Okay. okay. And they are giving with their heart when they do this. And they're yeah. receiving the that more. The program is the hygiene program. Okay. And this one, we decided... Some children, they, they don't know how important it is to wash, wash their face, wash their hands mm -hmm. yes. correctly. And we have different stages of the mentorship program. So we will be teaching classes. Some children, when they go into a home, they're interracial. Mm -hmm. And they might go with a couple that have never worked with interracial hair. Yeah. So under this program, we teach classes on how to work with hair instead of going in and just cutting it all off. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That is awesome. Now, I know before our segment, I was speaking with Miss Amy, and I said, were you a part of the foster care program? I was not. Wow. I, I learned a lot from Julia because she was, and yes. that's kind of what got her into this. Her impression when she went into the foster care system and all of her things went into a trash bag oh, had a so major impact on her life. Oh, my Lord. And... By going through and you know trying to reduce that thought process to the foster kids, that you know my stuff's going in a trash bag, I'm trash. We want to yes. get them out of that mindset, and that's what this program is is wow. trying to do. 
What a beautiful soul and a heart. Absolutely. And I love volunteers. You know, no one has funds to pay for everything. So, so many people donate their time Mm -hmm. to a worthy cause. But you got to have some leadership. You got to have some vision. You got to have some commitment. And then you got to have some friendship that we can mentor together and pool. Mm-hmm. And it's such a beautiful sight to hear your story today. Yes. So as I was doing my research that you mentioned this, we have a lot of faces who are system to success. This program is about system to success. And what Amy had just said about that member, memory that I had, I was going into my second home I wasn't even two years old yet. Wow. But I still remember when social worker removed the trash bag out of the back seat, they had my brothers and my belongings in it and handing it off. And I want to share with you about Jimmy Graham real quick. Jimmy Graham, he said he spent several months in foster care. I had to fight for something to eat. All my clothes were in a black garbage bag and I cried myself to sleep. But there are several of these faces who you see, they're actors that are playing football, basketball players, and you wouldn't even know that they were in foster care. And just, uh, you know, just to let you know, it wasn't just Jimmy Graham that really got my attention. Well, what got our attention is that you're doing something about it, that the need was there. Mm -hmm. You've seized on that with solutions that will change people. You know, what you said today was so profound. You remember it Mm -hmm. when you weren't even two years old. How deep of impression did it leave? And we'll never forget. We'll we'll never forget this segment today. I walk a thousand miles, but my past does not have to dictate my future. Amen. And I wanted to share with you, a lot of these children, they feel that they don't have any belonging. But I wanted to show them, not only did I grow up and go to college, but I also served in our wonderful military forces. success story. I worked in NATO. I've had the best assignments. I believe that God puts you where you are supposed to be. And you never forgot. We talked about that earlier. You don't forget where you come from. You don't Mm -hmm. forget. And last but not least, before our segment ends, how do you get your funding? Right now, we take, we do fundraisers and we take donations. Okay. And we, in fact, we have a fundraiser coming up. A beautiful fundraiser event in Austin Beauty College in Clarksville, okay. Tennessee okay. is hosting it. Oh my goodness. Well, all of that information we're definitely gonna have yes. available and hopefully it, it meets the air it's on in that time. But I want to thank you both for what you do. And so what final remarks do you have to say? Final, final from both of you ladies. Amy and Miss Julia, final remarks. Don't let your past dictate your future. You can be a system to success. Amen. I love it. The same. Even when you're in foster care, regardless of what kind of home life you have, Mm -hmm. there are people out there who want to help. Wow. We want to help in any way we can, whether it be with free haircuts or the the hygiene wellness events, uh, classes, whatever it takes. And it's not just for the foster kids, it's for the foster parents as well. The parents, the parents, yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you, Foster Care to Fabulous, and they are fabulous in every way, right, Mr. Kennedy? Absolutely. And uh, we just say a special prayer over Foster Care to Fabulous, and we pray God's blessing in your be lives, upon you both and all that you do, okay? Thank you with love on the Treat and Kennedy Show. Thank you so much. and Kevin show it doesn't get any better than this we're talking about today being kind such as Mr. Kevin Kennedy you have been so kind today well and it's put me in a reflection mode yeah I love this show I love the uh questions and comments when you see us out and it's all working on all you know iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another I love it and a simple man can be so good, so kind, and yet so profound. And listen, I've got to leave you guys with gratitude. 
you know, also kindness, it opens up the door for gratitude. Mm -hmm. you We're out of time. All right. We want to tell more. Hold the camera. Cut it off. All right. Till next week. See you soon and God bless you. <laughs>